Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. I really appreciate all of the likes and the viewership and the subscriptions. And if you like this video, think about giving me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel so you can catch many more videos like this. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I read every comment anyone ever gives me. So you probably clicked this video because you're interested in how to treat your home for bugs, how to keep bugs out of your house for five pennies or a nickel. Um, now, what spurred this video was I'm, I'm a member of Facebook groups, a lot of different pages and stuff on Facebook. And there are several pest control groups that I'm a member of where I come in and I I read the comments that people make and I suggest helping people. You know, I try to help people where I can. If uh, they may be doing something wrong, I may say, well, you, have you tried this approach or have you tried that approach? And so that's what these groups are for. They're, they're really for us to be able to kind of mingle with each other. And if there's a problem, say out in Wisconsin somewhere, somebody has an issue, uh, they can ask, well, uh, how do I get rid of German roaches? Or I'm having a problem with chemical resistances. What are you guys using? And so you can kind of help people be able to uh, further their business and, and help their customers. And so anyway, I'm a member of this group and there was a post. So a guy, what he did was he came in and he asked, how can he convince his customers that an outside only service is all they need? So let me explain. In pest control, when you come out to a home and you're servicing a home, you have two options. You can either do the outside, well, three options. You can do the outside, you can do the inside, or you can do both, outside and inside. And so typically what an outside treatment has, what you do, is you go around, you treat the soffits, you might treat around the mulch beds, you may treat the, um, <coughs> the eaves, the uh, areas where spiders build, uh, maybe you do in the garage, you know, whatever. And so you're treating around to kill the bugs that are trying to get into the home because Bugs live outside. They come out from out, moving in. Now, if somebody calls you out to their home because they're having problems with, let's say, ants, and ants may be nesting inside the home. So when you, when you treat for ants, you're actually treating to kill a nest. Say there's a nest or a colony in your home. Um, if you treat the outside and only the outside, uh, That'll kill ants that go outside, but because the ants are living indoors, they don't have to go outside. They can come inside. They can travel around in your kitchen. They can get into your sinks. They can get into your water. They can get into your food. They'll get into your cereal or your donuts or whatever you've bought. And I say donuts because they ruined a box of donuts for me one time, and it just infuriated me. But anyway, the, the problem is is that Sometimes indoor treatment is not only needed, but required. So this guy's asking how he can convince his customers that outside service is all they need. Now, what this means is, say, you come to a house, you've already killed the ants, and there's no more ants in the home. The nest is gone. Then really all you need is an outdoor treatment because you're trying to keep new ants from moving in. And maybe if ants were to get into the home, uh, in the future or something, maybe they did get past your barrier. Maybe they were able to get into the home and, and build up a colony again. Then you would want to do an indoor treatment again. You know, you do more than just outside. So he asked how he could convince his older customers to switch to an outside only approach because he's been doing their houses for years and he doesn't need to do the inside and he's having problems catching up with people and he's missing the insides because people aren't home and they haven't left him a key and he's just frustrated because he's spending all this money having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth dealing with troublesome accounts. And he's like, you know, the thing is he really only needs to do the outside. The outside's the most important. They're never gonna have bugs as long as he treats the outside. So, this was a reply that was given by a dude. The outside-only service is the new baseboard spray jockey. Okay, so let me, let me take a point right here to explain to you what a spray jockey is, a baseboard spray jockey. All right, basically, people who do 
inside sprays every month. They spray your baseboards because those are the places that it says on the label to treat our baseboards because when bugs come into your home, they live under the baseboards. Ants live under the baseboards. Spiders get under the baseboard. Roaches get under the baseboards. Centipedes, millipedes, crickets will get under the baseboard because there's a crack under the baseboard. And so you treat the crack under the baseboard. So the term baseboard jockey was coined. So because these guys are only wanting to do an outside treatment, they've coined this derogatory term called a baseboard jockey. Ooh, you know, it's, who cares? I, I treat baseboards. I don't care. I, I wear that with pride. I am a baseboard jockey. And so he said, the techs are assigned 20 plus stops per day and all they do is sprint around the exteriors and move on. How is this any different than when done on the interior? Now, this is the first time I have ever heard an exterminator complaining about doing an outside treatment. An outside treatment. Where bugs come from, they come from outside. You know, isn't it your job to help your customer? Isn't it your job to do the outside? I mean, I just got over explaining how important an outside treatment is and here he's complaining about people who do outside-only treatments. I understand sometimes you need to do an interior treatment. You do. But he's saying that... Let's read on. I have a lot of clients that we do seasonal exteriors per their request. So you've got to ask him to treat the outside of your house. I still require at least one service includes an interior ins inspection, inspection, which means he may not do anything. He's just going to look. And spot treatment, typically of basements, just basements. So I'm just going to treat your basement. I'm going to come in your house. I'm going to treat your basement. You got to ask me to do the outside and I'm going to do the basement. Maybe, maybe. Fortunately, crawls are rare, so he won't go in a crawl space. He does it rarely. Rarely does he go in a crawl space. Bugs live in crawl spaces. Ants, a lot of times, will nest in a crawl space because a lot of times you'll get water drippage and stuff and dampness and ants like that. So they'll live in crawl spaces. Crickets will live in crawl spaces. Mice live in crawl spaces. How many foundation jockeys continue to spray into holes and gaps that could have been easily sealed in a few minutes with a nickel's worth of material? Now... And I'm going to get to that. Now, let's look at the loyalty value of an exterior-only client versus one who actually meets their tech a few times per year. Measure your referral ROI. Say, using these, ooh, I'm smart because I used a term like ROI. Between those who never see you versus those who could at least pick you or your tech out of a lineup. So basically, he's saying you need to meet your customers so you can convince them that what you're doing is working. You need to convince them that the evidence is not enough. Now, I do rental homes, and I may never see the customer who owns the house, ever. But because they come in there and they see that there's dead bugs laying all over the place, that's the evidence. The evidence that I've been there is when they come in and they see dead bugs. Bugs don't die by themselves. They die because they've crawled through some kind of pesticide. All right? So this, all right, so let, let's get back to this nickel. Because this is what you're, that's what you click the video for. This is what you want to see. You want to learn how you can do pest control for a nickel. And here I have run my mouth all this time. What is he going to say? You can't. Okay? You can't. You cannot do your own pest control for a nickel. You can't. Now, what he's implying is that you go around and you put caulking around your cracks. And, all right, so... You got your exterminator coming in the house. Do you want your exterminator squirting caulk around the cracks in your kitchen? Or would you rather have a plumber whose profession it is to caulk around your sinks and your bathrooms and your tubs? Wouldn't you rather that person put caulking down than your exterminator whose job it is to kill bugs? Now, I don't know about you, but I I can't do caulking. I'm, I, I can sort of kind of do it, but... It's not my profession. It's not what I'm good at. Do you want a guy going around trying to seal up around your beautiful brick home and taking and putting a bunch of clear caulk in the cracks where the mortar has separated? Of course not. 
you'd rather get a mason to do that. That's their job. That's what they're a professional. They're a professional mason. It's their job to come in and fix the cracks in the foundation and stuff like that. That's who you want to do that. You don't want your pest control technician going around shoving caulking in all the holes and cracks around in your home because they don't know what they're doing. That's not their job. Their job is to kill bugs, not be a general contractor. All right. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at is it. Now, let me tell you what you can do. This is what you can do as a homeowner to save money on your pest control bill. All right. Maybe you don't need pest control very often. Maybe that's, it's not something that you need all the time. Maybe let's, let's try to reduce that bill. Let's try to save you money. How can we save you money? All right. These are just two. I'm just going to get two or three just really basic, easy things to do. Do you have mulch around the outside of your home? Mulch, like wood, ground up pieces of wood laying around your foundation. What these do is it creates little gra- gaps and cracks and holes that bugs can live in. It also holds moisture in, so which has, and it, they, it makes it warm. It, it creates a, a warm environment so bugs can get in and squeeze in under the mulch and they can live there and they love it. They love mulch beds. So when you're doing your landscaping around your home, you may have to spend a little more money, but if you think about doing something like gravel or crushed red brick or some white decorative stones or something like that. Now, I don't recommend white stone if you've got dogs or something because they'll get mud all over them. But you can do something like that similar around the outside of your home. Now, what stone does is it allows for moisture to actually drain through. And so the, the, the wetness actually drains through the stone and it doesn't sit in the mulch and soak in and create a, like, because mulch kind of makes like a sponge. If you've ever noticed, it gets really wet and damp and it takes forever to dry out. And so if you lay stone down, stone allows for good drainage. Your, 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 uh, you can lay down plastic on top and then put your stone on top of that if you're worried about weeds and stuff like that growing through but that really does help and it makes it a lot less hospitable for bugs now you might get a few spiders or something like that but when it comes to like roaches german not german cockroach i'm sorry um oriental cockroaches wood roaches love mulch um centipedes millipedes not to mention subterranean termites love to eat mulch even in mulch that's treated you know a lot of times you go to like a uh, mulch place where they sell like dump truck loads full of mulch they'll tell you well the mulch we have is treated it's not like that stuff you buy at sam's or walmart or home depot or wherever we treat our mulch and that may be that may be but the thing is is when you lay the mulch on the ground the treatment eventually leaches all out and the mulch is no longer treated but then by then you're replacing the mulch so you figure in six months you're going to have to buy new mulch six months you're not going to have to buy new rocks rocks don't don't they don't break down so they stay there forever um does caulking actually work to keep bugs out of your home? No, it doesn't. The thing is, you need your home to be able to breathe. Your attic breathes. It's got either gable vents or ridge vents or some kind of ventilation so your attic can breathe. Your crawl spaces, if you've got a crawl space like he mentioned, crawl spaces have ventilation so they can breathe because otherwise your home will, will, it will hold moisture and you'll get things like mold and mildew and stuff like that in your home and it makes the home less hospitable to you now the more hospitable a home is to you the more hospitable it's going to be for things like mice and bugs and things that you really don't want in your home which is why you need to think about doing something like pest control even if you do it yourself at least then you don't have the bugs and stuff crawling around in the house your home needs to breathe your home needs cracks it needs holes in it you can't possibly seal up every single hole in your house. There was a story, a news story, not too long ago. And if somebody can find it, please link it to me below because I, I remember reading it and I cannot find it for the life of me. But there was a family who was worried about a nuclear holocaust. They went and they sealed their house up to try to keep the, the you know, nuclear whatever out of the home. And they ended up suffocating in the home because they did. They sealed the house up really good. You know, kind of like if you put a plastic bag over your head and there's no room. Eventually you run out of oxygen and you die. And it's a tragic story. And it happened. And it can happen to you. So don't try to worry about sealing up the house. Just kill the bugs when they get in. So hopefully 
this has helped you understand there is no like nickels worth of you know solution for pest control there really isn't even if you do it yourself you're going to spend more than a nickel but you can save money overall in the future if you do things like gravel mulch you know don't do wood mulch do gravel uh, you know, if you if you're thinking of buying a home, think of buying something like a brick home or a stone home or something that's got. Uh, keep your keep your wood painted. You know, if you've got wood siding, paint it regularly. Keep it from absorbing water because if wood absorbs water, that gives places for cockroaches to live. It gives places for ants to live. It attracts termites and stuff. And so, if you do these things, these regular general maintenance things on your home, then It'll save you on your pest control bill, and you may not have to spend even a nickel on pest control because you've done what it takes to actually do a little bit of prevention around your home on your own. So you guys have a really great day. I really appreciate it. Sorry for the different type. There's a little bit of different, you know, setup today uh, because I wanted to show you those messages through Facebook, and it's kind of hard to do that without the computer set up. So, and you get to see my house and everything all behind me. I don't have my green screen set up. There's a diaper bag in the floor over there. Anyway, y'all have a great one. I appreciate it. Thanks.